Good morning, everyone. I couldn't hear myself, so I thought you couldn't hear me either. Uh, welcome to Zion Fairwater, and we will have announcements later on in the service, but at this point, would you please rise as we sing the song, Light One Candle, in preparation to light the Advent wreath. Please rise as you are able. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. Scripture tells us that there is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out all fear. God created this world in love, and this world will end in the love of God. God's love pervades all aspects of this life, from birth to death, pain to delight, strangers to lovers. God's love is there. We light this candle in love. Please remain standing as we sing our gathering hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word, In the word was life. The word became flesh and lived among us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and love. Free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the scriptures. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 7 verses 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. Our second reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here end the readings, and please stand for the reading of the gospel.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, quote, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had borne a son. And he called his name Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Today we have a guest preacher with us all the way from Massachusetts. It's uh, Brother Kester, who is a monk in the Society of St. James, uh, St. Uh, John the Evangelist. And he has a very good message for us about fear not. Please listen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know this is not a fair question, but I'll ask it anyway. Had I asked you five minutes ago to tell me the story of the birth of Jesus, my hunch is it would have gone something like this. One day, an angel appeared to a young girl and told her that she would be the mother of God's son, even though she was not yet married. Before her marriage, she and her fiancé traveled to the town where his family came from. Because there were so many people in town at the time, the only place available for them to stay was the stable at one of the local inns. It is there she gave birth to her baby boy, whom they named Jesus. After the birth of the baby, some shepherds found them and told them that they had been instructed by angels to look for the baby. Well, you get the picture. The story of the birth of Jesus that is imprinted on our minds and in our hearts is the story that Luke tells us. That's the story of carols and hymns, stained glass windows, of great works of art, and countless Christmas cards. That's the story we think of when we think of Christmas. That's the story we will hear in a few days' time. But that's not the only story. That's not the only version. There is another version because there is another person involved, and that's Joseph. It's Joseph's story, it's his version of the story Matthew tells, and is the one just read a moment ago. In this version, the angel comes not to Mary, but to Joseph. While Luke suggests Mary is at first frightened and perhaps confused, we see that Joseph is worried and troubled. Joseph 
being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. You can imagine this. Joseph is hurt, confused, perhaps offended, even worried, maybe angry, because somehow Mary has become pregnant. Fearing scandal, both for himself and for Mary, and perhaps wanting to protect his own honor as well, Joseph decides to break off the engagement as quietly as possible. It is this Joseph, troubled Joseph, worried Joseph, even frightened Joseph, that holds my attention. You may be familiar with icons of the Nativity. In some icons of the Nativity, we see Joseph off to the side, sitting down, his head in his hands. He is clearly wondering what on earth should he do? Beside him is an old man carrying a crooked, twisted staff. That image tells the story, which, while it's Joseph's story, is also a story we all know only too well from our own lives. Joseph doesn't know what to do, and the voices in his head are bending and twisting his thoughts, convincing him to do something other than that what he had planned, all in the guise of doing the right thing. That's Joseph. He is someone who wants to do the right thing. Because as Matthew tells us, Joseph is a righteous man. That we are told Joseph is a righteous man is a hugely significant detail. It is also a theme picked up over and again in Matthew's Gospel. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Joseph is not only a good man, he is an honorable man, whose life is shaped by a sense of justice, compassion, and a dedication and devotion to God and the things of God. In other words, Joseph was a righteous man concerned with doing the just, compassionate, ethical thing in a manner that would not only please God, but would be of God. No wonder Joseph was troubled. My hunch is we can all sympathize with Joseph because, like Joseph, we too want to do the right thing, the just thing the compassionate thing, that not only would please God, but would be of God. How often, when faced with a situation that challenges and even confuses and hurts us, do we mull things over, maybe even with our head in our hands, wondering what to do, and listening to all the voices in our heads that bend and twist our intentions, convincing us to do not the right thing, but the easy thing, the logical thing. I know I do. Joseph certainly did. I bet you do as well. I know I can get lost for a long time in muddled thinking. That was the case for Joseph. He thought about his situation, he mulled it over, he listened to the voices in his head, especially the ones that twisted and warped his thinking. And he came to the decision that he would break off the engagement and dismiss Mary quietly. Sometimes the voice of reason comes to us in the guise of doing the logical thing. 
No one would have blamed Joseph had he done this. In fact, he would have been praised. But sometimes the logical thing is not the righteous thing. Sometimes the logical thing is not the thing which, in the language of the Beatitudes, satisfies us or gives us a taste of the kingdom. And that is what Joseph was to discover. Having resolved to do the logical thing and dismiss Mary, he hears another voice telling him, do not be afraid. If the quest for righteousness is one of the great biblical themes, then so too is fear. From the moment fear entered the Garden of Eden, and we hear Adam say, I was afraid, until today, fear has been an overwhelming condition of humanity. Who among us does not know the taste of fear? Yet, from that moment in Genesis to the end of Revelation, God tells us repeatedly, do not be afraid. We hear it again today. Joseph, do not be afraid. If there is one thing that muddles our thinking, twists our motives, and warps our decisions, it is fear. We are afraid of so many things. And the voices in our heads, like that old man with the twisted, bent, crooked staff and the icon, knows it. And God, who says, do not be afraid, knows it too. The amazing thing, the incredible thing, the wonderful thing is, look what happens when we stop listening to those voices in our head and that old man in the icon that tell us to be afraid. Look what happens when instead we listen to the voice of God who tells us, do not be afraid. Look what happens. God Emmanuel is born among us. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The story of Joseph is not simply his story, it is our story, because it reminds us that when we listen to the voice of God, who tells us, do not be afraid, amazing things can happen. When we, like Joseph, are no longer afraid, we will discover that God, Emmanuel, is here in our midst. So next time your thinking is muddled by fear, and that old man with the crooked staff is bending and twisting your thoughts. Listen for that other voice, the one that whispers, do not be afraid. And maybe, just maybe, you will discover that God Emmanuel, God with us, is in your very midst. The kingdom has broken in and you are deeply satisfied. Do not be afraid.
and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Do not be afraid. Amen. Please join in singing our sermon song today. Have no fear. Please stand as you are able for the response to the word. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. We pause for a moment of reflection of which we want, the things we want to lift up in confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn to one another and share a sign of this love and peace.
may be seated for the announcements. So just a, a few announcements for you today. I think you probably saw them scrolling on the screen. I uh, hope to see you again this Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock here, 4 o'clock at St. Stephen's if you need an earlier service. And then a week from today, we'll just be on our regular schedule for Christmas Day. Uh, after worship today, we invite you to go um, just back there for a little bit of coffee fellowship, but please come back because the children are going to be presenting their Christmas program. So get a little something to eat, let the adults set up in here for the children's program, and then come on back and join us for that. Also, I have been uh, given permission to share with you that Robin Berg is doing well. She is home, recovering after knee surgery, and she is asking for prayers for her recovery. Jen, are you here? There you are. I thought I heard you. What do you got to share with us today? Uh, just a few things, mainly for my uh, middle school confirmation class. So um, as you know, the holiday package, you should have been doing this all these days along in the last three, four weeks. I should have half of your packet already in my hot little hands, and I do not have a lot of them. So um, please make sure you are doing that. This is an Advent thing. Um, the birth of Christianity is kind of a big unit that you need to do. So make sure you have that ready. Um, also, uh, January 1st, we will have a workshop so I know it's um, the day after New Year's Eve, um, but it won't be till 4 o'clock, 4 to 6, on uh, that Sunday, January 1st. Um, <clears throat> and it'll be here at Zion, which marks the transition of now confirmation is, will be here at Zion, too. So uh, starting in January, uh, Wednesday night confirmation class will be here now at Zion. Um, so uh, don't forget that. And then middle school girls, uh, the 27th, our overnight retreat. If you are interested in going, you and a friend, or friends, uh, please let me know so we can have enough um, supplies and things ready for that on the 27th. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Are there other announcements to be shared? I thought I saw somebody walk up with Jen. Okay. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, you're going to hold your peace. So let's present our offerings. Please stand as you are able for the offertory. Let us pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness, we ask that these gifts may be for many a sign of that love and that we may continue to share in your divine love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. O God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and vision to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. O oh God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats that are in peril, in peril 
due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy. O oh God, our vision. Raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy. O oh God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing from war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families who are experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated and lonely. God, in your mercy. O oh God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present with us today. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed their recovery, especially those we now bring to mind and say their names silently or aloud. God, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Now go in peace. Christ is near. Amen.